Hello friends, today let's talk about the topic general approach to massage and classification of massage. Let's start with a brief introduction of today's topic. Massage therapy has a long history in culture around the world. Today, people use many different types of massage therapy for a variety of health related purposes. Massage therapy is often considered part of a complementary and alternative medicine that is CAA, although it does have some conventional uses. This discussion provides a general overview of massage therapy and suggests source for additional information. Massage is referred to by some people and as an art perhaps because it practice involves coordination of high order and the use of great skill to achieve the integrated body movement allows the application of appropriate manipulation at the correct depth and speed to achieve maximum effects. The practice of using touch as healing methods derived from the customs and techniques rooted in the ancient history, civilizations in the East and West found that natural healing and massage could heal injuries, relieve pain and prevent and cure illness. In addition, it helps reduce stress and produce deep relaxation. So here comes the general approach to massage. In professional settings, massage patients are treated while lying on a massage table, sitting in a massage chair or lying on a mat on the floor, while in amateur setting, a general purpose surface like a bed or floor is more common. Aquatic massage and body work is performed with the recipient submerged or floating in a warm water therapy pool. The massage subject may be fully or partially clothed or unclothed. So here comes the self preparation. The practitioner should start preparation of himself or herself long before contact with the patient. Attention to personal appearance, hygiene, and manicure are all important. As close contact will inevitable occur, the practitioner should wear protective clothing which is easily laundered and which allows freedom of movement while maintaining decency. Long hair must be restrained so that it cannot come in contact with the patient equally. Necklace or other jewelry should be discarded as also wristwatch. Rings should be removed as they can cause discomfort to the practitioner when performing manipulation and to the patient during most manipulation. Cleanliness is important so one should wash the hand before and after each treatment. Cultivate warm hand by always using warm water for washing and it also helps to keep are hand covered when outside temperature is cold. The range of movement of all the joints of our forearm and hand should be full. If you have stiff hands, we should do a series of stretching exercises aimed at increasing our range of movement. The most important last range movements are full abduction extension of the thumb to give a wide grasp of the octaves palm. Full flexion and extension of the wrist at least 80 degree of each movement. Next is the full pronation and supination of the radio ulnar joint. So here comes the hand exercise. To obtain the full range of movement, the following exercise should be practiced. Before exercise, check our shoulder relaxation. Number one, touch the finger tips of one hand with the fingertip of the other and press so that our thumb and little finger are separated widely. Number two, push the fist of one hand between two adjacent fingers to the other hand so that they are separated into wider abduction. Keep the finger into the same plane and repeat it for each finger. Number three, 
place the thumb together as in prayer and the thumb resting on the chest. Push wrist downwards and extend them without separating the heel of the hand. Number four, place the hand in the prayer position and keeping together turn them down and up trying to touch the abdomen and the chest alternately at each rotation. Next, move two hands alternately so that they pass one another at the midpoint. So here comes the relaxation. Relaxation of the hand is very important so that we always use our hand in full contact with the patient and mold it to the shape of the body we are touching with awareness of the tissue and their state. Relaxed hand contact is one in which the hand conforms to the contour of the part. The natural rest position of a human hand is with the finger and the thumb a little apart and very slightly flexed at each joint and can easily be adjusted with any size of the body part. This is the contact which is used in many massage manipulation. Coordinated and integrated movements of our body is essential for the comfortable and prolonged performance of massage manipulation without fatigue and physical stress of the practitioner. We should stand in walk standing stance and practice transferring our weight forward and the backward while maintaining our arm stretch away. We should practice stretching our arm through, across the calves and along the calves. These movements along the length of the patient and across the patient are the key movements in massage. Here comes the, the environment. The treatment area should be well heated and well ventilated but not drouthy. The padded treatment couch may be covered with fresh linen. The linen that women needed are a small blanket and a covering cotton sheet large and washable blanket or sheet, standard size pillow and pillow covers, small or half size pillow and pillow covers. The next is the, the treatment couch. An adjustable height couch is most useful of a type that has an elevating mechanism at each end and a removable section to accommodate the nose when the patient is in prone lying position. The couch should be covered with a small blanket if it is made up of a cold material with a cotton sheet on the top. So here comes the contact material. First one, we have powder. The talcum powder is the most common contact medium. It should be non-perfume if possible or a baby powder maybe selected. The next one is cornstarch BP. This is crystallizable, it's a heavy powder which absorbs sweat very readily and should be used in the presence of profound sweating by either the patient or practitioner. Next is oil. Pure linolin which has a drag effect on skin due to its thick and heavy texture is used to obtain a slight pull on the skin. Lenolin cream, which is a water-based cream, is used when less drag is required. The next is liquid oil. The most commonly used liquid oil is probably olive oil, and liquid paraffin may also be used to provide a gliding effect and to lubricate the skin. The disadvantage of such oil is that they become rancid and if left in contact with the skin, can smell offensive. Next is the water-based lubricants. The water-based lubricants most commonly used is Ang Asuring. This light cream is used to give moderate lubrication and it absorbs rapidly. Next is soap and water. Soap and hot water with or without the addition of oil is used for scaly skin which may be caused by prolonged immobilization in a cast or by use of some medication which promotes and increase skin healing and at the same time cause the skin to become dry and scaly. So next comes the 
the preparation of the patient. Ask the patient to undress so that the part to be treated is adequately uncovered. We should be aware that some manipulation to be effective must extend to the lymph gland lying in proximal space. For treating of the upper limb, uncloth from the neck to the fingertip and specially remove all straps. For the treatment of the back, uncloth from the head to the buttock. Pants brief can remain but must be pulled down to leave the area above the gluteal cleft exposed. For the treatment of the neck, uncloth from the hairline to just below the clavicle. For treatment of the face, uncloth from the hairline to just below the clavicle. Ensure the patient is kept warm by use of covering. For example, if patient is sitting, wrap in a blanket leaving the arm to be treated free. If the patient is in prone lying position, we may need two head pillows crossing one another to create an inverted and open triangle so that patient nose rests below the crossings. A pillow under the abdomen to rest and thus flatter the lumbar spine. A pillow under the ankle to flex the knee slightly. Small seats are very useful for placing in direct contact with the patient and to protect the blanket. Seats are more easily washed and less likely to retrain any powder we use. Here comes the palpation and developing sensory awareness. Palpation is a skill that is acquired by practice. It requires that our hands should be relaxed, in firm, comfortable contact, and aware of what is under them. The term thinking hand implies that our mind is envisaging the structure that our hand is feeling and is alert both to identify the structure and to be aware of variation from normal in the state of the structure. To learn how to palpate, practice the following procedure. Place the hand on a series of bearing size rounded structure in turn, starting with large one that require an almost flat hand, for example, a cushion or part filled hot water bottle, a smaller bottle or rolling pin, a broomstick handle. So here comes the examination of the part. Before performing massage on either a model or patient, we should examine the part on which we are going to work. After carrying out a complete examination and assessment, we are aware of the problem that the patient has. The procedure of the examination is as follows. Look. Look at the skin state, dryness, oiliness, wetness, hairness, and completeness. Apart from this, observe for bruises, abrasion, and laceration. Also, look at the state of subcutaneous tissue. Is the skin emaciated or well padded? And if the skin former or taut? Is there any edema or excessive reddening? Second, feel. Run the hand down the length of the part on every aspect. Think as we do so as be aware of not only the temperature of each area, the degree of muscle tension and joint posture, but of any thickness area, which is painful or thickness or touch or not. Make sure the prone area can be approached with caution. So here comes the thickness patient. People who are thickness can be massaged without discomfort to them provided we observe the rule of always putting our hand in very firm contact as we start working and never lifting the hand off by thickness. That is, by lifting our palm off first, then phalanx until only our fingertips are in contact. We should never move one hand component, especially fingers in relation to one another once we have placed our hand in contact. Light work tickles. So 
always perform the manipulation at the maximum depth tolerable by the patient and to produce the required result. So next becomes classification of massage manipulation. The massage manipulation can be classified into number one, stroking, number two, effluras. In this effluras, we have light effluras and deep effluras. Number three, the petrissas massage. In this, we have kneading manipulation. In kneading manipulation, we have whole hand kneading, number two, palmer kneading. Number three, flat finger kneading. Number four, finger pad kneading. Number five, finger tip kneading. Number six, thumb pad kneading. Number seven, thumb tip kneading. Number eight, both hand or superimposed kneading. Number nine, elbow kneading. And number ten is heel of hand kneading. And picking up manipulation, ringing manipulation, and rolling manipulation. In this rolling manipulation, we have number one, skin rolling and number two, muscle rolling. And next one is sucking manipulation. Number four, the friction manipulation. In this, we have number one, circular friction and transverse friction. Number five, deportment or percussive manipulation. In this, we have clapping, hacking, vibration, beating, pounding, and tapping. So here comes the, the conclusion of today's topic. Massage has survived and continues to evolve till present date because it is the most fundamental means of giving care, affection, and aids between human beings. Its healing qualities differ from other modalities because massage confers its benefit through character and healing intention of those who gives and receive it. The true value of massage comes from the intrinsic inherent need of human to have contact with one another. 